from freezing early morning they came to Marino district, southeast Moscow, where Alexei Navalny lived before his lethal imprisonment. Rumors, most churches wouldn't handle the funeral, most undertakers wouldn't provide the cortege, the fear of ever tightening dictatorship that may well have proved lethal for Navalny himself. Simply coming here, an act of defiance. We were very afraid. We arrived early and were standing here for a long time, hiding our flowers and cameras. But now I realize that we need to do this and speak up. You can't not come. Let them see that many remember, many know. It's not possible to silence it. Navalny, Navalny. They bore witness as the coffin arrived. Inside, a mother's untimely final farewell to her son. The service rushed to completion amid security fears with hundreds of police massed outside. Crowds nowhere near able to enter the church of the icon of the mother of God soothe my sorrows. But able to vent their grief and anger. Putin's a killer. Russia without Putin. No to war. The queue to get anywhere near the church, snaking away into frozen Moscow. Amongst them, French, German and US ambassadors and the British Chargé d'Affaires. They know presence is politics. The route from the church to Borisovskaya Cemetery lined a cascade of floral tributes. And at the cemetery gates, chanting at the police, let us through. The Terminator 2 theme, his favorite film. Latest reports suggest almost 60 people detained. The FSB's Secret Service will have watched carefully, perhaps for future reference and action, and these people know that. And from his wife, Yulia, who fights on outside Russia against the lethal clamp of the Kremlin, her own social media tribute. Well, earlier today I spoke to the exiled Russian journalist Mikhail Zygar. I started by asking him if he was surprised that so many people had come out to Navalny's funeral, despite the warnings from the Kremlin that they could be breaking the law. Funeral is, is something really sacred, actually, and it would have been too much just to... Uh, to start ar arresting people uh, during the, the funeral, that was something unimaginable, I think. So I'm not surprised that, that a lot of people um, showed up at the funeral. At the same time, uh, I, I spoke to different, uh, to different people uh, who were uh, there in, standing in line, and their impression uh, is that uh, the majority were the elderly people, uh, parents of... Uh, uh, political immigrants, parents of those who left Russia uh, two years ago. So uh, a lot of people could not come to the funeral, so their parents came there. What effect does Navalny's death have on people's bravery to stand up now? For a lot of people, he was the symbol of the hope. He was usually compared to Harry Potter, a person uh, who once was killed by Voldemort, by the dark, the, the dark Lord, but then managed to survive and uh, uh, managed to continue fighting, and he didn't die. So, and it was, it's, it's very, it's remarkable because a lot of people believe that uh, they should just wait. So it was, it was some, some kind of hope for a fairy tale happy ending. Now we know that there is no, uh, there is no happy ending um, of that fairy tale. So. Everyone should participate. Everyone should fight. Just finally, I'm talking to you from Tehran, and of course, there's increasing uh, suggestions that Iran has been supplying Russia with uh, weapons that it can use in Ukraine. I mean, when you say everyone must fight, is there a sense also that the axis of resistance and Russia and others are also saying everyone must fight? All, all the comparisons between the Iranian society and Russian society are relevant, but there is what, one, 
one little exception. Uh, if, if we compare uh, Iran after the Islamic Revolution of 1979 in Russia, uh, there is no faith in, uh, in Russia. There is no, no religion. There is no unifying ideology. So uh, Putin doesn't have that, um, the, that kind of influence on the, the minds of, of Russians. So it would, it would be very hard for him and it would be impossible uh, to, to, to unify the nation without anything but fear. He, he's, got, uh, he's got fear. He has taken the whole country as, as hostages, but it's, it's, it cannot last forever. Mikhail Zagar, thank you very much. Thank you.